Welcome to the National Health Priority Area or NHPA uh, podcast. First thing what we need to do is identify what is a national or what is a health priority. So it's a preferentially uh, rated health related activity or function that can be used in established with health planning goals. So to put that simply, it is a health issue which has been seen as a um, priority to that particular population and it is uh, obviously all the health services are going to be established around fixing those. So the National Health Priority Area in, uh, Initiatives, when were they actually organised? Why were they organised? So to start with, they were um, a response to the World Health Organization's global strategy, and that was for health by all by the year 2000, and then it did adapt and change uh, based on all the subsequent revisions. Um, so what it is, it's a collaborate, um, collaboration between Commonwealth or federal uh, state territory governments, non-government organisations, uh, health experts, uh, and consumers in order to try to fix and um, reduce any of the incidence of um, these particular types of diseases. Um, the initiative recognises that the strategies for re uh, reducing burden of disease needs to be um, pluralistic, uh, meaning it needs to be based on all different levels of um, prevention strategies, so upstream, midstream and also downstream or primary, secondary and tertiary responses. Um, the hope is by targeting the specific areas um, that imp impose high social and financial costs, so the national health priority areas themselves, um, we can improve um, better health um, and also better um, settings, both financially, socially, and, um, and through our um, health status um, within the society. Um, the diseases and conditions targeted under the national health priority areas were chosen mainly um, because that if we are to focus on them, we are going to experience significant gains um, for the Australian um, population and their health. So if we look at the nine national health priority areas, um, there is a website attached and if you do click on each of those in your PowerPoints, it is a direct link to um, extra information for each of those. So the first one was cancer control um, and most of these were established in 1996 um, with cardiovascular health, injury and prevention, um, mental health, uh, diabetes, uh, mellitus, which was added in 1997, Asthma, which is added in 1999. Um, one of the newer ones, arthritis and musculoskeletal conditions, which is 2002. Obesity, which is a rising epidemic in our culture, which was established in 2008. And the most recent one in 2012, which was dementia. So we have touched on this um, in a small way earlier on in the slides talking about why a national health priority area will be made or established and we spoke about making significant gains in health. Um, the other major reasons which are very accessible, hence the reason they're in red, um, they all contribute highly to the national burden of disease and we will look at what is burden of disease shortly um, as well as contributing highly to um, health statistics such as morbidity, mortality and life expectancy. And the final one, probably the most important one, is that with primary prevention and secondary prevention, um, we can improve a large number of these diseases through changes in lifestyle and behaviour, particularly in Australia. Um, if they tick all those boxes and we can make that significant change as discussed before, um, they are likely to become a national health priority area. So we spoke about burden of disease. Um, now, whenever we talk about burden of disease, we associate this with a high cost. Now, cost doesn't just have to be financial. Um, it can come in a large number of different formats. So some of the burdens that we might experience from some of these nine diseases uh, could be unemployment, um, increase, or sorry, a decrease in income. We have high medical costs, both to the individual and also to 
um, the national health uh, program. We have a large number of hospital admissions, which decreases the access for everybody else. We might have a decrease in productivity, so people's day-to-day -day lives, um, similar to work, um, similar to the way they go about their daily business, might be hampered or um, restricted in some way. And finally, people's overall. Now, obviously, these ones won't be too new to most people. So life expectancy is obviously how long on average um, from our um, time of birth we're expected to live. Um, and it's the most common measure of um, health or population health used. It's a very good summary um, to measure and compare populations. So uh, mortality is obviously our death statistics. Um, so we can look at that at um, age of death, places of death, causes of death. Um, we can look at it from a number of different ways. Um, when we're looking at national health priority areas, um, we might look at mortality in particular cultures or particular populations. We might look at certain age groups to establish the significance of the issue. Morbidity is obviously the indicator of um, the lifestyle of a population and most chronic diseases um, are, are not communicable or infectious, so they are um, lifestyle related such as diabetes, obesity, cancer and chronic injuries. Finally, our last reason for something being considered a um, national health priority area is lifestyle and behavior. So lifestyle diseases are those that are influenced by um, person, a person's negative health decisions. So we can link this in some ways to beliefs, values and attitudes because as we know, health decisions and health behaviors are influenced strongly by these. Um, so the reason they're made a national health priority area is that they can be changed through primary prevention and through behavior change. Behavior change or changes to norms uh, within our society will limit the impact or stop the effects of negative health decision making. And hopefully, um, if we can try to make these changes early, it will reduce the influence and the burden of these So again, here is a link to the national health priority areas um, for you to get extra information and extra detail on each of those um, nine priority Let's have a little bit of a look at some questions now. So we could actually ask you a question or the waste papers may ask you a question based on developed and developing countries. So linking two bits of content, both national health priority areas as well as looking at um, the overall um, national health priority area content knowledge. So it might ask us to discuss the reasons for the differences in priorities for developing and developing countries. So some things we need to identify here is firstly discuss. So we need to provide explanations and evidence. Um, why there might be a difference in priorities. So priorities might be, um, and in this case is, national health priorities for developing and developed countries. So when we're answering the questions, what we should be seeing is that the priorities of developing countries are non-communicable diseases, such as cancer, diabetes, asthma, and mental health issues. The reason for this is non-communicable diseases are also known as chronic diseases, which means they're not passed from person to person. They're generally a long duration and gen sorry, generally slow progression, uh, and the four main types of uh, non-communicable diseases are cardiovascular disease, cancers, chronic, chronic respiratory diseases, and uh, things like diabetes. So a lot of those are hopefully ringing true with our priorities. Now when we look at on the flip side, the priorities of developing countries generally include communicable diseases, things such as uh, co uh, cholera, polio, tuberculosis, and HIV. So as we can see, there are generally um, very, very different priorities when we're looking at a developed country versus a developing. All right, our final slide is um, just something what we 
need to take a uh, look at is an example of a, a positive advocacy campaign which has taken place uh, and we will actually look at this in greater depth in class uh, but what this is is in fact um, the percentage of the population who smoke uh, what we can see is there is a huge downturn in the number of people who do smoke now and a reason for that is because of the systematic approach um, that the government did take towards making smoking and the reduce, uh, reduction of smoking a priority to Australia. So each of those black boxes, it may be difficult to see on the video, but when we actually analyze this um, in more depth in class, each of those black boxes represents a significant um, promotion or intervention by uh, the federal government to try to reduce the issue. What that shows us is if that we do have that systematic approach and we do focus a majority of our um, resources and our efforts in trying to combat a particular disease, um, we can actually see that there is a huge downturn in the percentage or the, um, the issues involved with that disease.